Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be... Oh god, my nose itches. Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about encoders! So currently I'm working on one of my CPT courses online that gives me access to an encoder and I thought it would be a great idea to go through what an encoder is, actually give you footage of or to see the screen as I'm using the encoder so you can see what it looks like, how to navigate it, because I found before I took this course They'd bring up encoders and I wouldn't really know what that fully meant. Yes, I understand what an encoder does, but actually seeing what it looks like, how to use it, I, I wasn't getting that information and that's what I really, really wanted. And I couldn't find any place for free to get that information. The only way is to buy an encoder or access to an encoder and I didn't want to do that. Because I'm not a professional coder yet, there's no reason for me to purchase an encoder or access to one, but I was happy that my current course gives us access to one and I thought it would be a great way to share this information with all of you just in case you don't have access to an encoder or you won't until you're actually on the job. So we'll see an image of the encoder. I'll have the image of my screen as I'm going through it so you can see kind of what it looks like, how to access it, but I'm finding I'm still getting frustrated, especially with CPT, but this encoder that we're using, it's slightly frustrating me and I'm not sure if it's just a slight glitch. I don't know, but we'll see all of that and I think we'll go over like one quick example to see how the encoder is used. So we'll try it out. So first, let's talk about what an encoder is. So an encoder is a software program. There are quite a few out there. They're all pretty different as far as what they look like from what I can tell. And some of them you access via the internet. Some of them are actually downloaded on your computer, but either way, some or all of the coding books, ICD-10CM, PCS, CPT, HCPCS, all of those are within the database of the software. So you can go into each code book, search the index for whatever diagnosis procedure, whatever it is, and then it will take you to those entries and from there, you can find the codes you need or in PCS, build the codes. And sometimes the encoder will be directly linked to the coding page or whatever the facility is using. As with my employer, the hospital I work for, they use Epic. The encoder is directly connected to Epic. So when you're in the encoder searching in the index, or whatever code book on there, when you click the code or choose whichever code you want, it will automatically populate into the coding tab in Epic. So some of them are connected like that. Some of them are not. So you sometimes have to find the codes you need in the encoder and then manually put them into either Epic or whatever reimbursement healthcare claim form, whatever it is you're using. So that essentially, in a very quick summary, is what an encoder is. And a lot of them, from what I can tell, look very different as far as visually how they're set up. But we'll get somewhat of an idea of how they're all basically set up. So let's do it. So in our encoder, here we can see on the top area right here where my cursor is, that gives you all the demographic info of whatever patient it is you're coding for. So currently with this encoder, you can click on a patient account and then within there you can see the documents or whatnot, I assume, and then find whatever codes you need and then it will directly connect it to it. But I haven't clicked on any 
patients, so we're just in the code book right now, but that's essentially where you'd find that demographic info. And then you can click on what code books or codes you're going to be using. So CM, the diagnosis code book. I'm not sure what DX, why they have DX, even though CM is diagnosis. Anyway, PCS and then CPT HCPCS. So right now we are just going to be looking for CPT HCPCS, so we might as well just have that clicked. And then the search bar here, you can actually type in words or codes and it will search the index for whatever it is you put in there. So let's say I want to search for wound. Let's do repair of wound. So when I clicked on whatever item in the pull down menu to the left here, it brings up the index of the CPT code book. And you can scroll down until you find wound. Wound, and it is highlighted. What I would prefer is when we click on wound, it would already bring us directly to that item but now you have to scroll down. And then from there you can choose whatever it is you want. If it's a complex, wound repair or intermediate, etc. Now the one other thing that I don't like about this encoder, since we're in the index, if I wanted to go to, yeah, I want the complex, when you click on it, <laughs> it brings you to this page and you have to click through until you find the code range or the code that you want. Why can't it just bring you to the entry item? So at least we know we clicked on 13100. So we know that's in the surgery section. Let's find the range integumentary system would be 13100. So repair and closure. 13. 100 repair complex and then once you find the code range etc it will give you all of the other codes that come below it with a little description of it and then these little icons here the N that's instructional notes so if there are specific guidelines especially that have to do with margins of lesions, if you're excising them, etc., or any other notes that pertain to this section of the code book, you'll find them all there. M, smart tips are available. I don't know why you can't click on it. CPT assistant is available. And then coding clinics for HCPCS is available. So you have some of that information that is available. And if you click that, it will open it up even further if there are any more below that. And then from here is where you would have to manually go into whatever claim form, reimbursement form, etc. That's where you have to go to put that in. It doesn't automatically populate from here. But that is essentially a very quick way of how to navigate. Now let's actually do a example. See if I can find a good one. Okay, so this one, the procedure is a bronchoscopy with biopsy, brushings, and washings because there is a right lung mass in the patient. So again, I get frustrated with CPT because I'm not entirely sure what to look for as far as in the index. So Let's do biopsy, because that is the more complex part of the procedure. Biopsy, comma, lung. Let's click on it. Let's click lung biopsy. See what happens. So lung. So there, so under lung, 
under lung here, we go down to biopsy. And there is bronchoscopic, which is, it said a bronchoscopy. So that would be 31628 and then numbers after that. So let's try that. So 32618. And if we can see up here, it already has that number listed for us so we don't forget. Three, that was in respiratory system. Three, one, six, two, eight. Accessory sinuses? I don't know. See, and this is also what's frustrating. I don't know if this is the glitch, but I want to expand accessory sinuses and it won't. So I'm not sure what that is about. <laughs>